All right, so I'm going to start building my hologram. Um, some of these pieces, just so we're aware also, let me close this. Oops, I didn't want to actually close that apparently. Uh, some of the pieces that we're building in these um, could actually be done also in 2D, like in After Effects. <clears throat> and in my After Effects class, we actually have an assignment where we do build a 2D hologram. It's a 2.5D, so it's like fake 3D. Uh, but we're going to focus on the 3D part of this. And the reason for that is we want to give it that depth. We want to give it some substance. Um, After Effects can do a good job of faking 3D, but when it comes to, like, I need an actual 3D solid item to use, I want to use an actual 3D app. All right, so the first step I do in any assignment is I go to my P drive, I go to one of my millions of folders, and then I set up my folder structure. Every assignment, you should set that up. So I know I'm going to have images that I'm going to be bringing in. Maybe I have reference that I just want to drop in. I know I'm going to be rendering stuff out, so that will go into a spot. And then I know I'm also going to have a scenes folder. So I set those two folders up. I don't have to worry about it until I get to those points, right? Um, now, before I get into actually building what I want the hologram to look like, or what I want the hologram to physically have, um, I'm going to look at some of the attributes of a hologram, and I'm going to build a material first. That way I have something to start off with. It gives me... Um, it gives me more motivation to keep going when I can see more of a finished product earlier in the stages. Um, when you have to have everything gray, it kills you sometimes. Um, so let's say something like this. Um, you'll see one of the things that's going to make a hologram look hologrammy is if we can see through it, right? But it's not like glass. It's like we can see through it, and then we can kind of see like an edge around it. Okay, so we're kind of just seeing like the uh, borders of it. So that's what I'm going to create first. So I'm going to just make a uh, random shape here, like uh, maybe a tube. And I'm just going to shrink this in a little bit. And then I'm going to make a material down here. And this is just going to be my generic hologram material. OK. Uh, now, looking at what that thing would look like, I'm just going to turn all my knobs off. And I'm going to go to my transparency. I need transparency on this. Now, if I uh, pull this down to, um, or just turn this on, I have transparency. So there it is without, there it is with, OK? So 100% transparent. If I go to color and I turn this on and I give it any color, we're not going to be able to see it because it's transparent, right? So if I go to my transparency here, I pull the brightness down some. Now I'm getting this like half transparent, half blue color, OK? So I'm just going to drag this onto here. I'm going to hit my Shift R button, and that's kind of a starting point. Okay. Now, one of the things we want to do is um, think about reflections. If you're sitting in your car and you're looking at the car in front of you, and you look at the reflections directly, and you look at the reflections on the side of the car, do you notice a difference in what you see directly in front of you and what you would see on the side? Right. Think about your rendering class. How the reflections are not always like solid reflections all the way around. Typically, the ones in front of us are a little bit um, less reflective, and then around the edges are more reflective. Okay, so I want to do the same thing here with transparency. Straight ahead, I want to see transparency. On the edges, I want to see more of a surface. Okay, so uh, under my texture for the transparency, I'm going to load in what's called Fresnel. That's what causes reflections to change based on the angle we're looking at it. So when I do that, I get this fuzzy mess up here. Um, and I get this like gradient. So I'm going to render it and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So now it's hard to see, but it's very uh, transparent here and very solid right in front of us. So we need to swap that around. So I'm going to click on my Fresnel and there's an S N in there. It's Fresnel. You just ignore the S. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just going to switch these. It's dude and dude. Then you can see the image up here. It's totally transparent in the middle, very opaque on the outside. Shift R again, we get that. Okay. Now think about while we're uh, on the discussion of that material, X-ray, X-ray, something like this. So if we were to look at this material, you can see how it's very transparent in the middle and very opaque on the edges. Okay. So this same material that we're using for a hologram could also be used. For something like an X-ray, okay, uh, you can use it for a bunch of stuff, but this is like the starter. 
Um, if I don't want this to be fully transparent, okay, so that's the transparent part. This is the opaque part. Uh, if I want, don't want that to be fully opaque on the edges, I just change this other color to like a gray. Nope, I lied. That white needs to say. And the black needs to go into a gray. Come on. Oh, I just got rid of it. Hold on. All right, so now we're rendered. No, we're still not getting anything there. Yeah, that's fully. So I must really have to go really light on that. There we go. Okay. And then I can also adjust this button in the middle. This is like where your gradient is. So I'm going to get more gray or I'm going to get more white. Okay. Um, I could also pull the white, move that down further if I need to. So for now, I think that's okay. So I'm going to close that. Uh, I'm going to go to my color. Uh, I'm going to pick something that looks more like the color scheme I want, more of this like bluish tint. Typically, you're going to have three colors that holograms typically are, uh, blue, green, and orange. Those are typically the three you'll see. Sometimes you'll see a yellow. Feel free to experiment, okay? Find something that's going to work. <clears throat> um, cool. So that's working, looking better. Um, I'm going to do some adjustments on this just to help it look a little bit better. <clears throat> so one thing we always want to look at is uh, what do the edges look like? So you can see how blocky and choppy these edges are, especially down here, okay? Um, so I want that to go away. So on this shape, I'm going to go to the object, I'm going to go to the rotation segments, and I'm just going to double that. More segments means that's going to be smoother. That's a lot smoother. Um, I want to give this a little bit more of a surface here. So I want to give a little bit of a transition, a little bit of a fillet to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the fillet, change the radius to like two, and then take the segments uh, to, let's say, four. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay. So now if I look at the before and after, you can see there's a nice little softening that happens from around the edges of that. Okay. It's really apparent right here. See how ugly that looks and then how pretty that looks. Okay. So pretty much all of my stuff, I want to have a fillet on so that I can see this nice transition. <clears throat> now, we are running into an issue where I can't see my stuff. It's very difficult to work when you can't see it. So under one of these things, I think it's options. Filter panel. Oh, there it is. Uh, under display, I'm going to go to quick shading. I lied. Constant shading? Nope. Hmm. Before, it didn't do it as much. Level of detail, no, post transparency. All right, I'm going to ignore it, and I'm just going to delete that material until I'm ready for it. <clears throat> okay, um, cool. So I have my material set up. That's pretty much ready to go. Oops. And then I'm just going to start building stuff. So looking at my hologram, um, you'll see in a lot of these, um, typically you'll see some sort of like ground plane. So think of your hologram having some kind of ground that the hologram is then emitting from. Okay, so I'll create that first. So I'm just going to create a sphere. I'm going to take my segments in this case down to like, I don't know, 10 and take the radius down to, let's say, 5. Anytime I have a lot of repetition, typically I'll make something, you know, very small. There we go, something like that. And because it's so small, those divisions don't matter so much, okay? The more segments I have, the bigger that piece of geometry is com computing-wise, the slower my machine is going to go, okay? So maybe I can get, oh, not five. <laughs> maybe I can get away with seven or eight. Nope. I think nine is going to be the magic number there. Still keeping around, okay? So I want to create this, like, grid pattern of these things. So I'm going to take my sphere. I'm going to go to my MoGraph, and we'll use this a lot, and I'm going to hold down <clears throat> Alt as I go to the cloner, okay? Now, I'm going to zoom in so we can see what's happening here, all right? Just like we did on the previous assignment, you know, there are defaults that are in there. So the cloner is automatically giving this a 50 centimeter offset in the Y. So I'm going to say, don't do that. Um, and I actually don't want this to be linear. I want this to be a grid. Okay, the options change down here, so I'm going to say how many do I want in the X, the Y, and the Z. 
So which direction is vertical? Yeah, 33% chance to guess right. Say why then. Good. <laughs> now remember, uh, red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. The little cheater is right here. X, Y, Z is right there. Okay. So Y is green. This is green. So this one, I don't want a layer of these. Okay. So I'm just going to put that to one. I only want one going in the Y direction. Um, there's dots here. You can ignore those. Those are just for the sizing aspect of it. Uh, then I'm going to go to the count. So as I increase the count, you'll see that I get more dots. Okay. Uh, there's two ways that we can move this around. So we can do it by endpoint. Basically, I'm setting the ends of this and then controlling how many of these I have within that area. The other way I typically prefer, which is per step. And what that means is um, I can just increase the amount and it'll just move further and further out. Okay. So as I make more in the count, you'll see how it just expands outward. Okay. This way on the end point, I would have to increase the count like this. And then I would have to grab that end and then spread it out. Okay. So it's like a two step process. I like it just on per step makes it a lot easier. Now, this is already going very slow. Well, that's way too many. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cap this for myself at 100. <clears throat> Keep in mind, if you do want more, you can always jump back to this later and then add more. Okay. <clears throat> and then for my size, I'm going to go to, let's say, 100 here and 100 there. Okay. So that gives me a nice little grid plane. And just like me spinning around, you can see how slow this is going um, because of that. Um, I'm also going to consider like where am I going to be showing this from? Typically, we wouldn't do like a 360 spinning around of our hologram. We would go from like maybe like this angle to that angle or something like that. So like basically like this corner is a dead corner. There's nothing over there that we really need. So if I grab the cloner, which is right here, I can move it. Now Maya has uh, a tool like this. Um, it's called Mash where it allows you to do exactly this stuff. But in order for me to move it, I actually have to create new things that then allow me to move it, which is a big hassle. I don't know why they just don't have it like this. Um, so when we talk about, you know, which one's better for this cinema, definitely. Okay. So I like the way that looks. It kind of looks like there's this grid, even though we don't see it on the other side where we just moved it from, we just assume that it's there because why wouldn't it be? Um, and then I'm going to move my um, tube. I'm just going to move this up a little bit because I don't want this to be in the middle of it. I want it to be like sitting on top. There we go. Okay. Now, just to see what this is going to look like, instead of me dragging this material onto every single one of my objects every time I want to preview it, if I just Alt G to group it and then drag this onto the group, then everything gets it at once. And then I can hit Shift R and then I can see what that's looking like. Okay, uh, you can't really see it too good, but trust me, those dots are all over the place. If I want to make this a bit more complex, I'm just going to delete that material. Uh, if I want to make it the dots a bit more complex, I can actually add a shape into the sphere and then have that kind of be an additional piece, right? So let's say I want to do little plus signs. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, plane just to keep it simple. I'm going to go to display shading with lines so I can see the divisions. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn this to, I think, three and three. Yes. So you can see how I have oops, three divisions this way, three divisions that way. And I'm going to hit this button. That button up there allows me to edit it. So what I want to do is I want to go to the faces and then delete those. So I click this button to get to make it editable. Then I click this button to edit the faces, and then I can just click those and delete them. Then I'm going to go back to my model, back to my scale tool, and then shrink it down to an appropriate size. Now, it doesn't have to have actual like depth in this case because there's going to be so many of these things, and they're so tiny. Then I can just take this and drop it into my cloner. And now you'll see how I have um, spheres here and little uh, plus signs or crosses right there. If I want them to be on top of each other, I take these two things, 
group them together, and now they'll be together. Okay, and they're actually offset, so I have to adjust that. So I'm going to go to the plane, go to the coordinates, and just reset where that's at. Go to the sphere, and reset that also. And now they should be, yep, right there. So there's a sphere, and then there's a cross, okay? Now I don't want to work with this grid on all the time, so I'm just going to hit the check mark, and then that will mean it's still available, I can still turn it on at any point, but it's not going to calculate, and now I can work very quickly. Okay, and that's typically how I like to uh, set up my stuff. All right, so let's create some more stuff. And a lot of this is just going to be simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to set it up just so that when I'm ready to kind of preview stuff and see how everything's fading together, I click it on, hit the render button, and then click it off when I'm working on some more stuff. Um, it also helps you kind of, you know, again, visualize the whole space, right? Um, so I'm going to go here and make a capsule. And I'm going to shrink this in. Uh, again, go into those divisions and see if you can, you know, lessen any of these. Uh, that's going to be good for now, I think. Now this is going to be kind of like a little um, uh, watch things, the little tickers that would go all the way around. So that's going to be on the outside of this. All right, so that's good. Um, notice how I haven't moved anything away from the origin. Everything is right there. It makes your life a lot easier if everything just stays right there. Back to MoGraph, back to Cloner. I'm holding Alt so the capsule gets under there. I'm going to change this from linear to radial. You'll see how it makes like this, you know, that direction. I'm just going to change it. Everything has a way to change the direction of it. You don't have to know where it is. You just have to know, like, where do I change the thing, okay? So this is XZ. That's the one I want to go to. You'll see that they're facing vertically. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the capsule and just change its orientation to X or Z. It was Z. There we go. Then I can go back to my cloner, change the radius, and then change the count. Okay. Now what's cool about this, now I can move it up. Um, let's say that I like this design, but I want to create another one on the inside with less divisions. All I have to do is take this one, control drag it, now I have two. Now I can just take the radius and shrink that one down. Take the countdown. And there we go. I'm going to make it an even number. 16 looks good. Make sure this is an even number too. 10, it's actually maybe too much, let's do, let's do an even 100. There we go. And then I'm also going to start moving this up. I think that'll be good there. And then I need to start naming stuff. <clears throat> By the end of this, you'll have a bunch of stuff in your list. So I'm going to say inner spokes. So I'm going to call those. I don't need to name the capsule, just the main thing. And then this will be oops, um, lots of spokes. I might have more, so I don't know. I don't want to put outer because then there might not be outer. I'm going to drop these into my null. And then again, I could drag that material onto the null, <clears throat> turn on my cloner, and then render it. And then there they are. Okay. Now another thing we can do on this cloner is under the basic tab, instead of me constantly turning this off, turning this on, turning this off, turning this on, I can just say visible and editor off. And now they're not visible here at all, but then when I render it, they're there. Okay? So again, you'll find in cinema options all over the place. Okay? It's just a matter of looking for them. Um, this one I kind of forget sometimes that that's on. And so I'll be like, where's my stop? And I'll click around. Notice the little red stoplight there. So that's an easy way to get to it to see, oh, that's off. Um, cool. Oops. And now I'm like locked into something. There we go. All right. So let's create some more shapes. So I'm going to make another tube. I'm going to uh, delete this material so I can see my other stuff. There we go. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to shrink that down. I'm going to pull this one out. And on this one, I'm going to add some divisions to it. 
And you want to do these at the beginning, because if you duplicate stuff, you don't have to go back and then update all of these things. <clears throat> I'm going to then go to Slice and check that on, because I only want this to be, let's say, uh, 60 degrees. There we go. So I like that. Um, I'm going to go to Cloner for this one, and then set this to Radial, set this to XZ. That's good. Now, you'll see it's a little bit off. Because of how this one did the from and to, it's just at a weird spot. So if I go to the cloner, go to the uh, transform, I can just grab, I believe it's this first one. And you'll see that as I rotate this, eventually it'll hit a spot where it's like, that's it. Okay, that's actually, I think I have too many of these. 60 times four, that radius might be too big. Let me shrink my radius down some. There we go, that looks better. Having it closer in, and then going to that transform, and then just putting that at 60, and that should be perfect. Okay, uh, back to my tube, back to my object, back to fill it. And then I'm just gonna do two segments and put that at you know, one, I think would be a good number. And then I'll grab the cloner and then let's say scoot it up some. Okay, and again, if I like the way that looks, I can copy it, <clears throat> change the radius on it, go into the tube, maybe change the slice. So maybe instead of zero to 60, it's zero to 30. And instead of having uh, 72 rotation segments, which seems a lot in this one, maybe I'll do 30 or 20, there we go. And then maybe I'll make that a bit thicker by changing the outer radius. So I'm gonna go right here that. And then I can jump back to the cloner and then change maybe the count. That's cool. And I think I'm going to duplicate this again and then just uh, scoot this one down some, change the count to two, and make this slice be a lot more like uh, 120. And I'm going to change the height to make it a bit thicker. Now, some of these you're not going to really be able to see based off of where they're at. Uh, let me just drop these into my group. So I drop it into the null, drop it into the null, put the material on here. Now, when I render it, though, because we have transparency, we'll see all those different layers, and that will give it a nice presence of how it's going to be set up. Now, keep in mind, we don't have any lights in here. We don't have any uh, effects as far as glows and all that. So we're not at a, a point where it looks anywhere near finished, but at least we can kind of see the layers. We can kind of see how things are being built. If we wanted to um, change some of the things, let's say that I duplicated this material and then I threw this into the orange area. I'm gonna delete it from the null. And let's say, I'm just I'm gonna do this quickly so we can see it. I'm gonna grab these items and group those and say blue. And I'll grab these ones, group them, say orange. And now I can just drag orange onto here, blue onto here, and then hit render. And now we'll be able to see that combination of blue and orange and whatever else. Okay, again, just to help us visualize and get our point across. If this is a job for a company and they want us to, you know, where are you at by the end of the day? This is going to be much more impressive than having it with no materials on there at all. Okay, and it obviously helps us kind of decide what's working and what's not working. Uh, so now I can just take these and just pop those off. Okay, so that process is just gonna be the same thing. Um, you can grab pretty much any one of these items and throw it on there and just changing parameters and cloning it. It'll create some cool stuff. Here's a pyramid. Uh, I'm going to shrink it this way. I'm going to, um, uh, this one I don't need to clone. I'm just going to leave it like that. Oops. Uh, I am going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I am going to kind of position this, let's say right here. And then shrink this in. Push 
paste that in there. And I'm really going to scale this down. There we go. Think of like big details and small details. The big details are the big stuff you would see. The small details just kind of reinforce what's there. So now this, if we go to the pyramid, <clears throat> this does not have any fillet options. Okay, um, It's not a huge deal if everything doesn't have that on there, but I think that would uh, add some to it. So um, there's actually a bevel, which is under this purple one, and it is right there at the bottom. Okay, So these purple ones will go underneath it. So I go to that, and then you can see how now we have this bevel on here, which I could then click on, change the offset, and then change the subdivisions to that. Okay, and I think that bevel or that pyramid would be a good orange element, let's say. Fill it in the orange area. Okay, so any of these other pieces you can experiment and play with and see. Some of these you're not going to use, right? So I wouldn't use, let's say, um, the figure. The figure looks stupid for this kind of thing. But I might use landscape. Like I might have an actual like landscape element in my hologram that I just have like off to the side or, you know. Imagining that this hologram is controlling this landscape here. You can pull that up some. Let's put that on the ground. Uh, we can also change the, any of these parameters that are right here, right? So width. I take this down to 24, take this down to 24. We'll get this very like jaggedy looking landscape. Uh, if we have more divisions, We'll get a nice smooth landscape, lots of detail to it. <coughs> uh, we can adjust where the plateau is at. There it is. So how it's flattening right there. And then the seed will just give us different patterns. I think we can also make it, yeah, spherical to do something like that, or you know, no border at the sea level. I don't believe there's any way to really offset it from here. There's ways to do it other ways, but just not in this one, right? So something like that I may have off to the side just as a, you know, this is controlling that interface. Uh, in mine, I don't like it, okay? So again, that should give you a, a good indicator as to where to start, where to go with these. Um, most of these shapes, you can really just kind of play with and get those. So like even like this uh, kind of shape, Looking at these, that shape is not there. But if I go to cylinder and I go to my object and I go to my rotation segments and set it to six, well, now I have that shape. Okay. Uh, even as I'm duplicating like my grid pattern, one of the options for um, doing that was um, linear. So it's just a straight thing. We did radial, I showed that. There's also a honeycomb array. So that will actually like offset each one, kind of like bricks or kind of like. Um, these things here, that's not a grid, that's a honeycomb array that we would then adjust and set up. There you go. So here's a good example where you have these kind of like organic shapes going around this, right? Here's more stuff just on the inside, more stuff going here. You can put a cloner inside of a cloner. So if you wanted this thing to be like cloned, but then you want to have 20 of those things, you could do that as well. Yes, sir. The line shapes around there. If I took this, there's other ways to do it um, in post, but let's say that I took that mountain shape, or that right there, and I'm gonna make this really big, and I'm gonna make this um, rounded. There we go, that's too big. And I'll duplicate, drag this on here, and then I'm really gonna pinch this. So if I go to this for now and I make this. completely white except for this small piece on the edges. Then we'll start to get more of that like line work around there. Okay. Um, the way that you would typically do something like that is I would actually render out the wireframe uh, of what this is. This has way too many divisions for that. And I think in cinema, I don't think that's an effect in here for wireframe. I've never had to do it in this in this one, pixel projector, yeah, even one of these other materials might do that too. But 
Uh, that's typically how you would do that. Get out of there. And I want to get rid of this one so I don't get confused. Okay, so I, when you're in doubt about like how detailed should I go, add more detail. I'll show you what the, uh, the result of mine look like. That one. I just open the same one as this, yes. Right, so you can see the same kind of thing here. There's the shapes. Let me get rid of my materials. There we go. Okay, so these little hash lines were just like cubes that I rotated and duplicated all the way around. More of these, the dots, same thing. They were just different scale. This is just a beveled one, so nothing fancy there. Here's a hologram levels, yes. So this was another one I was kind of playing with. Here's a kind of random shape in this kind of gyroscope thing. Over here I have this, which is kind of like a levels holder. And then inside here would be like the different levels. So as you're like turning the knob, let's say that thing is like, like adjusting how many boxes are in that bin. And I could have the box be one color and the levels be a different color, okay? So you can think about that kind of stuff too, nesting things inside of other things. Cool. So it should be pretty straightforward as far as like creating these things. Uh, it's just a matter of cloning and keeping everything kind of organized and centered. Questions? Mm -hmm. We can, but what we're going to do is we're going to render this out, and then inside of After Effects, I'll show how we can then make things glow. Anything else? No? All right.